What's up, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna build out a list view for our orders so that we can uh, see what we've purchased uh, now that we can log back in as a customer. If you recall, in the last episode, we built this magic link login. When you uh, enter your email, you receive this email that has a login link. This is just magic, uh, magic link authentication. And then we landed on this orders page, which doesn't actually have any content. So let's take a look first at the database and see how we might uh, model our orders. So if we look at the schema for the database, we have these uh, customer objects. And inside of the customer, uh, inside of customers or next to customers, we have this object called customer products. That's the join table between a customer and the product they purchased. We called it customer products, but really the name might actually make more sense as orders. So I'm not gonna rename it at this point, but I am gonna just consider a customer product sort of uh, a, at least a reference to an order. That also gives us reference to the checkout session ID. We're gonna have all the information about the payment and whether it was successful or not. We also have reference to the internal product and the internal customer. So it is kind of like this nice join table that tells us information about what was purchased. So we already have this orders controller and right now the index is just uh, rendering out this plain thing. So let's say uh, our orders are current customer dot customer products dot order uh, by, we're gonna order them descending. And then inside of our orders index, we wanna build out this view so that it actually has like a nice, uh, a nice look and feel to it. So we're gonna grab the same sort of header that we've got over in our products view. We're gonna use that inside of the index here. And I think we also want to have a table. So we're gonna use Tailwind UI again and we're gonna grab just this simple table here. We're gonna just take all the HTML for that and we will drop it in to the top. And we don't actually need this header because we're gonna keep it nice and simple. So in order to show, or like to, when we're, when we're talking about rendering out our list of orders here, we're gonna iterate over at orders and print out our rows of our table for each order in the database associated with this customer. So the first, uh, in the first column, let's put in, uh, per perhaps we put in like, you know, the, the ID of the order, order dot uh, ID. I don't know if that's the actual order ID that we want to show people or not. I think we want to actually maybe show them the checkout session or the payment intent. I don't know. Um, then next, let's show the product name. And finally, we'll just have a, a view button that will users or bring customers to some detail view for the order. So this is gonna be the order path for the order. And let's take a look at what we've got. So this is our orders page now. So we have uh, some list of orders. It has an ID, tells us what we purchased and we can click on view. The headers are a little uh, incorrect here. So we'll say product. We could even put like an image of the product in here because we do have that product image. But for now we'll call that good. Okay, so for the show page on the order, this is where we wanna show sort of maybe a little bit more detail about what was purchased. So this is gonna be the product um, and then maybe the photo of the product. And then we wanna list all of the attachments that users can download. So here, what we might do is let's go build out um, our order show page. And inside of that order show page, we're gonna start with you know a similar header here. And this is gonna say maybe order at order.id and then we'll have some details about the order. So before we can even render this, we need to go back to our orders controller and create a new method here for our order. Current customer, current blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we see this is for order ID number 23. All right, so I think on the left side, we wanna show the image of the product. So let's actually start from the product show view and then we'll sort of edit it to make sense for the customer. So if we refresh the page now, we don't actually have a product and we can change that by going to our orders controller and grabbing reference to the product is at order.product, refresh the page. Okay, so this is pretty close to what, this is what the, um, the creator sees as they are editing and creating their product. But we can do something very similar here where instead of naming the or showing the views, we can just have like download buttons and then we'll say the name of the attachment. And uh, we'll, yeah, so we need to modify this a little bit. So at the top or on the left pane, we're showing that product image. And then we're gonna have a list of all the attachments that 
you can download. Okay. And let's see here. Oops, we changed the wrong one. So here, a list of the attachments that you can download. Okay, so now this is a list of the attachments you can download. We don't want views because we don't want the customer to know how many people have seen this. And then instead of this edit button, we're gonna have a, a download button. And our download button is not going to use the default sort of um, active storage download tools. And that's because we don't want people sharing these download links with each other. So instead we're gonna share a, uh, or this download link is going to be sort of like almost a proxy or we're gonna use the controller as a way to just render out the raw blob for the object. And that's because we don't want someone just to like right click and say copy link as and then share it with their friends and then they can download it directly from AWS. So instead we're gonna make this download link actually go to orders or maybe to like some attachments route or something. So maybe we can call this like attachments path for attachment. And that will go to a controller action inside of the attachments controller that will um, require that the customer is logged in with at least with their, uh, their, magic, their magic link authentication. So this attachments path doesn't exist because I don't know if we have an attachments controller yet. So let's look at our controllers inside of the, uh, the stores controller, it does not. So let's go create an attachments controller inside of the stores controller. Rails G controller stores attachments. Okay. Stores attachments controller. This is gonna inherit from the store base controller and it's gonna have uh, a, an, a requirement that you're authenticated as a customer. So again, if we look at like the orders controller, this is gonna authenticate the customer here. And here we'll just say like show and the show route will just, we'll find the attachment and then we're gonna send the raw attachment sort of like GitHub Copilot thinks we might. Uh, okay, so then does this work? No, okay. So inside of our routes, we have to add um, a new route for attachments inside of here, resources, attachments. Okay, all right. So now we ha at least we have this like download link, but the, uh, yeah, so it says the, the index action could not be found. Right, okay, so instead of, um, I, I did this incorrectly. So back on our order show page, this is gonna be to the attachment path. Um, attachment singular. Okay, so now that should go to the right thing. Okay, and then the, the show route is missing a template for the request. Okay, cool. But that that's like getting us pretty close. So let's also remove this form to add an attachment. Like it doesn't make sense for a customer to be adding attachments. So that is fine to remove. And then uh, this one doesn't have a name and I think it was actually like a broken attachment, but whatever. So now what we can do is we can say, uh, let's go update our attachments controller so that it will download the file. So we're gonna say at attachment is current customer dot attachments dot find params ID. Let's see. So does the customer have reference to their attachments? It does. Okay, so it has products through customer products and then a product has many attachments. So we can say has many attachments through products. That's gonna be quite the join, but it should work just fine. All right, so now for now we'll just render the JSON of the attachment so that we can see that this is working as expected. Okay, this is cool. Now we've got the name of the attachment. We have um, some details. This is also where we will log that the current customer is viewing this attachment. So we'll kind of keep track of how many times each individual customer is actually like downloading their files. So maybe you're now wondering like, how do we actually get the raw file, right? And so if we look at attachments, if we actually, let's let's open up a Rails console, attachment.last. So this is gonna have a file on it. And that file is an active storage attachment. And one of the methods that are available is called download. 
and that will give us back the actual just like blob or like the raw binary for the file which is gonna work just perfect for our use case. Because what we can say here, instead of render, we're just gonna say send data. That is like a very raw, or like it's a little bit of a lower level method instead of render or redirect. And send data allows us to just pass in a blob as the first argument. So we're gonna say attachment.file.download. And then we can also give it a file name if we wanted. So maybe we can just say like um, file, so each file when we, when it's uploaded is going to have a file name. I don't know if this is what creators will ultimately want, but we could do this file.file name. There's a bunch of different uh, methods here too. So we can say file.file name. Um, so that tells us what the file name is, but that gives us back this object, this active storage file name object. And uh, so what we need to do is actually convert that to string if we want to use that as the file name, dot two s. Okay, so now when we go to the show route for attachments, so if we come back here, refresh the page, now if I click on download, you'll see that the, the ebook is actually downloaded as a file. So what's cool about this is if the customer is logged out, so we'll just clear our cookies here and try to refresh this page. Um, so we're not able to, we're, we're not logged in right now, but if we try to go directly to attachments too, then we're not able to download the files. So this is one way that we're sort of securing those files so that um, people have to at least do a little bit of authentication to see those. Uh, okay, so now we've got a, a full working system, right? So users can, or customers, end customers can log in to the website where they purchased their product. They can view the products that they've purchased and they can download the content of those eBooks or audiobooks or whatever is being sold as part of that product. So now we have sort of a pretty complete workflow. However, I think it would be even better if we had a way to email the customer when a brand new product is available that they've purchased um, and let them know they can come to this page and we'll sort of embed a little bit of information about how they can log in, etc. So let's do that in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.